Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. This is a custom video for Brian from Korea. All right, he writes, Hi Austin, my name is Brian from South Korea and I am a great fan of your channel. Thank you, Brian, for watching. I do appreciate it. This is my first paid query. I currently have a pre-owned S Serial 16700 Pepsi GMT Master. All right, so S Serials are from 1993 the 16700 is the last of the, as I call them, straight GMTs, where you couldn't separate the 24-hour hand and the local hour hand. So this is a classic model, and this is uh, the very last iteration before it went. GMT Master 2 only, where you could separate the 24-hour hand and the local hour hand. By the way, the 16700 only came in a Pepsi version or a all black version. The Coke is GMT Master 2 only. It came out on the Fat Lady 16760 and it's only ever been on the GMT Master 2. And people are really anticipating that it's going to come out on the current modern version sometime. Whether it will or not, I'm not sure, but it should because there's nothing more GMT Master 2 than the Coke. All right, but anyway, back to the GMT. One, all right, the 16700. The external, well, he's saying exterior, of the watch is in excellent condition, but that's why it made me wonder whether all of its parts are original or perhaps got exchanged with service parts at some point. It's a good question. That's something I would be concerned about as well. Some details of my watch for reference. Okay, number one. All the loom in the dial and hands are completely dead, all right, as it should be because the 1993 pieces had tritium dial, tritium hands, and by this point, it should be dead or maybe in a pitch black room after your eyes adjust, glowing just a little bit. My 1996 T-Serial 14060 glows just a little bit. Number two, there's no crown etching at the bottom of the glass which is something they started in around 2002. So you wouldn't expect to see that. So that's normal. And if you did, it would probably be a service crystal, which for a while with these service crystals, put a little S in that LEC coronet to mark it as a service crystal. But apparently they've stopped doing that. So my 16570 has a service crystal because there was a mark on the crystal. It was bothering me, so I had it changed out. And so when it came back, it has that uh, little S in the LEC crystal. But apparently they stopped doing that. And so if you have the crystal changed out, it won't have the little S anymore. And it's kind of funny because my Explorer 2 has a mark on the Cyclops that just won't come off. And Next service, I might have it changed out. Now the question is, are those service crystals with the little S in the LEC coronet uh, collectible? Are they gonna go up in value? They don't make them anymore? Hardly, all right, hardly. But it's kind of interesting, I wonder. Now, I mean, who would pay more for, for that? Absolutely ridiculous, but I'm kind of glad they're not doing that. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, I may or may not change it out. I'm not sure, I'll have to think about that. But yours shouldn't have one, so that's fine. Number three, aluminum insert looks as though it hasn't faded at all. Has a few tiny scratches, which can't be easily seen unless you look closely. So that's uh, interesting because a 1993 piece, you would expect it to be kind of faded, kind of beat up. But this might have been a safe queen, all right? This might have been a really gingerly worn watch that spent a lot of time in the watch box. Maybe the person had a bunch of other watches and hardly ever wore this one. It's entirely possible. And it's kind of unfortunate that we, we look at a watch and it, it could be an older watch in great condition and it makes us second guess it. It's almost like that's it, it looks too good to be true. It must not be true. Typically, you know, a watch should look its age, but every now and then you get a, a really well looked after example and it looks like that's what you might have because looking at the font, it looks like an original insert. So 
I think he talks about that a little bit later. He says, I'm the third owner of this piece and both first two owners haven't used this watch often and was unpolished, or that's what I was told from the second owner when I bought it from him. I think that answers your question right there. And that is awesome to have any unpolished five digit piece, but especially the 16700, which was a very uh, tool watch Rolex GMT. So I don't think there's many non-polished pieces out there. So that's great that you have it. He says, here are some additional questions. After we went back and forth on email, he, uh, he presented these questions to me. Number one, do you reckon all the parts are original? I do, I do. You can definitely tell if the, the clasp is and it does look the part and the, the tritium should be, well, it should be starting to patina somewhat, have that eggshell texture to it. Get a, get a loop and, and check that out. It shouldn't be glowing and it's not glowing. So it doesn't look like the hands have been replaced. That's good. The bezel insert looks fine. And so, uh, yes, everything checks out just from the pictures I've seen. Number two, it's an S serial, but the stamp is dated July 1995. All the booklets have either 1994 or 1995 dates. Are these period correct booklets? Yes, perfect, because they would have produced the watch and, uh, and then it would have sold a year later in 1994. So the timing lines up perfectly. And as far as the the stamps in the in the booklets yeah around that area is fine so it looks like you have what was essentially a really lightly used watch or maybe even a safe queen and sounds like a really nice non-polished full set piece so it, it looks beautiful number three i kind of talked about this but i'll read it again is the bezel a fat serif font or a fat sans serif okay it has serifs and it looks like a fat font with serifs, but they're different fatness levels. I would just call this a fat font with serifs. serifs. It's got the serifs. I've seen other 16700s without serifs, okay? But the, the twos were wider than the twos you get on the replacement bezels. And so I think this looks fine. Again, if it looks scratched up and faded, it would make me a little bit more comfortable, but don't look, look a gift horse in the mouth. I think you just got a really well looked after piece. Number four, it kind of looks like the loom is starting starting to slightly patina. I know it doesn't look so in the photos, but is it normal for an S-serial to have original loom this white? Yes, uh, it could be because patina is a combination of three things, time, light and dark, and moisture. So imagine having like three sliders and, and you can adjust them and you can make the watch older or newer. And so you kind of adjust that, make it a little bit older and the humidity level, how much water is in the, the air and under the crystal, and you kind of change that. And then how much light is being exposed and you change that. And if you get it just right and you push it back, so it's a very old watch and just the right amount of, of humidity and either dark or light and it's it's debatable what it is but you could you know that would be the combination for beautiful patina and sometimes you get a little bit too much humidity and you get some kind of fungus growing on the hands and that's really unfortunate but beautiful creamy yellow patina is really fantastic and it's interesting because while we know it's those three factors we really don't know the specifics and it's not like you can just patina a watch and and we haven't kind of figured that out yet so that is totally normal because my 1996 watch if you compare it it looks a little bit patina but it really looks pretty bright but it's it's sort of the the eggshell finish and again it, it, it looks like the shell of an egg basically so get a loop yours looks fine and yeah I wouldn't expect to to see it all that patina just uh, being a 1993 piece. So this is totally normal and it might take a while, but if you hold it up to a Swiss made dial, you'd probably notice a difference. 
He says, any comment would be great. Really curious what you think, Austin. Thank you in advance, and I look forward to hearing from you. It looks like a fantastic piece. That's what I think. I think you did great buying. This is a great watch to have. I would love to have one in my collection. It's a millimeter thinner than the 16710, which when I found that out, instantly made me want to have it. It's, of course, not as functional as the 16710, but it's a, a classic, traditional GMT, and, and this is the best version, the Pepsi version, in my opinion. It's a matter of taste. You've got a full set, very potentially unpolished. It looks well looked after, and you know the history, and uh, I'm curious what you paid for it, but this is a watch that will almost certainly go up in the future, and uh, I think it was good buying, and I think you have a fantastic piece. He says a few additional questions, and then he kind of said, I don't have to talk about these. He kind of changed his mind, but I'm going to because I might as well. Number one, I was told this watch was unpolished, but considering this is an S serial, it's, its condition seems too good, almost no scratches to be unpolished, so I find it hard to believe. Can you tell by the photos I attached? If you need more photos from other angles, please let me know. Not a problem if this question cannot be answered. I really can't answer the question because even if you send me photos, I can tell you if it's been polished, but I can't tell you if it hasn't been polished, right? And even then it can be pretty hard. Now, kind of interesting, how does Rolex tell? If you go in and you ask them, what do they look at? Well, at least when I asked, they looked at the dents, okay? The dents on the case. And if the dents are sharp, then it's unpolished. If they're rounded, it means uh, the dent was made and then during polishing, the kind of sharp edges of that dent were rounded a little bit. So they probably put it under a microscope to do that. I don't think my loops are even strong enough, but you know, if you have a microscope, that's one way you could find out. And um, that's how RSC does it. But there are a couple different ways, and I'll put a link in the description to a video about what I look for, and you can check that out. But try not to think about it. It's uh, it's probably not, but you know you know about the history and again polishing is sort of a, this is something I've said in other videos. It's like marriage, right? What do they say? Before marriage, both eyes wide open. After marriage, one eye shut. Right? Before you get the watch, both eyes wide open look at everything, check out everything, but once you buy it, keep one eye shut, meaning don't look for things because it's after the fact, it's too late, just be happy with it. Um, I'm really bad about that. Finding mistakes after the fact, you know, finding, um, you know, on, on this uh, watch right here, there was like a little mark on uh, one of the indices. They've got uh, like little mirrors uh, for indices and a, a couple marks I found and it just, they just bugged me. And so you just have to let those kind of things go, all right, if it's possible. But I know we love looking at the watches and thinking about them and, you know, you want, you want confirmation, right? And that's what's so frustrating about polishing because oftentimes you can tell if it's been polished, but you really can't tell if it hasn't been polished because a Rolex piece can go to Rolex at least a couple times and have that Rolex polish and um, and you wouldn't know the difference, but uh, yeah. Bexley bevels, that's another sign as well, uh, which um, yeah, let's not go into that. Enjoy your watch. He says, I would love to fit a Jubilee bracelet to my watch. Uh, does RSC normally sell these? Yes, they do. Depends on the country though, right? But here in Japan, they see if your watch could have come on that bracelet, and if so, they'll let you buy it. Short answer is yes, okay? I know in the States you can get that extra bracelet, in Japan you can, uh, but really strict, strict countries like Vietnam, maybe not, right? To get that bracelet, they might want to take your old one. You have to call your RSD to see. And number three, how long does it take for a tritium loom to turn into a certain yellow color? Just a ballpark guess would be enough. I would say 30 years, that's just a ballpark guess. But again, it's those those sliders, those 
Yeah, I always liken it to photography. You know, you got the aperture and the shutter speed, and what's the other one? Uh, the 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 film strength or or the the ISO, right? And and the picture comes out depending on the 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 three values you put in. And like I mentioned before, time, humidity, and light level, and those are the variables. And I guess if you hit it just right. 25 years, maybe 30 years. Viewers, if you know, help Brian out. Brian, thank you for your custom video request. I appreciate it. This is a beautiful piece. I'm jealous. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.